Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a new series on the channel. And this series is a redstone series where I'm going to be building a redstone shop that will ultimately be built in the survival server that I play on. In this first episode I'm going to outline the goals of what I plan to achieve in this series, as well as showing you some of the basic things that I've already come up with uh, that will come together to form this, as well as some previous designs that I've made and some basic ideas. So this redstone shop system is heavily based on Sahara, which is a redstone um, shop system that Mumbo Jumbo, Grian and Iskal85 built on the Hermitcraft server. So I'll leave links to their channels down in the description so you can check them out. Um, and although this is based on their system, I've got a lot of fresh ideas that I want to bring into this, as well as improving on what they did. Um, and probably some of the stuff won't be quite as good, but the overall goal is to make a better Sahara. Some of this stuff I did actually come up with before they started working on their Sahara. So this will be interesting to check out. So I'm going to start right at the beginning with the first idea that I had. Which was to build um, a selection panel using a dropper. So the idea was you click into a dropper. There'd be a bunch of items and you could select them. So you could select black, red or green. Um, when you're in the vanilla texture pack these glass panes actually are invisible. You can't see them. But of course with my... Uh, dark theme interface um, you can so that's kind of a downside but anyway in the regular default texture bag you couldn't see these and you take an item out and that would select the item so it's kind of a clickable interface and this was the first iteration I came up with I'd have dummy items in the bottom right and when you click on the item it would detect the change in signal strength it would suck out all the items apart from the one you selected um, and then from that, it would determine which item you'd selected because it would be the only one that wasn't sorted out. I quickly realised that this wasn't going to work and I decided to head over to this design, which is the first functional design that I managed to create. Um, and this has yeah, nine different colours and it works a treat. Um, it's not spam proof, unfortunately, and it's a little bit slow and clunky, which is why I've improved it massively and also compacted it. So let's check it out. So we select, let's say, black put it back in and then in the chat it will say black so I actually did a video on this oh no <laughs> that's what happens when you break a block by accident okay let's just um let's just replace this and I've got to do some repairs because I do want to preserve this stuff here so luckily I can remember what to do in order to fix this I've just got to shove all of these back in here and then break that and then place two more minecarts <laughs> inside each other so yeah, this system used a seabud, and if you don't know what a seabud is, it's a form of um, of bud, so a block update detector, and this one detects when you click inside an interface. So I originally discovered this from I think it was Cubfan135, who made a video about uh, Jarvis, like a beacon system when you click in it. And after doing some research, I found some tutorials and some other people who've been messing around, found this really compact design, which I then modified and integrated into my circuit. So the way this works is, of course, it sucks out all the items apart from the one you're holding. Then you put your item back in, and it uses um, the information it gathers from going over these sorters. Um, and then it detects which one it is, and as you can see, selected is this one. So it works lovely, but I decided I want to improve this. I tried another attempt here to make a smaller one. Didn't really work. And then I moved on to this beast, which is the multi-menu one. So you could select food items originally. And then that would open a menu which had food items in. So you could kind of navigate through the menus. And this was my basic concept. I wanted to see if it works. Um, and it did. As you can see, um, we then get a bunch of food items. And we can select, say, golden apples. And, of course, I've got to wait for the delay in between for it to work. Um, because it is a slow system. Which is the main flaw. As you can see, apples have been selected. So it does work. But it's really complicated. It makes use of hop and minecart, so each of these has a different menu stored within it. But I decided to scrap this and head back to the drawing board. So I took a break from Redstone for a while, and I decided I'm going to work on the Ancient Craft server. So I decided to do that. I also played some Skyblock, and I moved away from this. And this is where we come to today. So I've created two more systems here and here for the selector panel. Um, and as you can see, this is absolutely tiny compared to the initial one. Uh, well, compared to that one at least. Um, this has got item sorters and 
it's got uh, dispensers and stuff. So I'll show you how it works. So this one uses water streams rather than minecarts. And if we hop in there, you can see we've got a different, lots of different options. We can select, say, purple, put it back in. And then um, the way I've got this working, instead of command blocks, I'm just sending a purple wool up here back to the player. And as you can see, it's detected that we selected purple and sent us a purple wool. So the way this works is we have the two hopper minecarts under here, which are momentarily unlocked because they're on an activator rail. So again, we do make use of hopper minecarts because they can draw the items out quickly. Then this is sent down into this hopper line. Um, and of course we detect that with a seabird. Then the second one, we um, when we put the item back in, this now has a comparator output. And we remove this, which is locking this comparator um, when the seabird is active. So as long as there's an item in there, um, it will trigger. And then this will trigger the dispenser, or the dropper, sorry, cause it to spit out its item into this water stream. And then we can use that water stream um, with sorters to detect which item was selected, send it out to the player, send the item back into here, and then send all the items back up to the top. And then we have this pressure plate to lock the seabird so that it doesn't trigger when the items are heading back into the dispenser. It's all rather complicated, but I think I managed to make it compact and simple. And so we can select any of the colours. The nice thing about this system is it's spam proof. So if you click in here, because we're only using the seabird once to detect it, and then the second time we're using the signal strength of the item, um, rather than using the seabird to detect taking the item out and putting it back in, it means no matter how many times we click in here, the system will not break. So this system works really nicely. I've got this little indicator lamp that comes on when it's processing and turns off when it's um, ready to be activated again. Um, but I decided once I'd got this working, I wanted to move on to the final selection panel. And that is what this beast over here is. So the aim of this system, if I haven't made it clear, is that your end of the shop panel, you'll select the item you want, so you'll select, say, red wool. So this is a category system, so you'll select red items. And then you'll wait for the system to respond, which doesn't actually take too long. As you can see, the light's already active, and as soon as that light turns off, we can input our input again. Um, and you can see we've got a different menu this time. So it's selected that we want red items, so all the red items have come through. And then we can select, let's say we want red stained glass. Um, and then the red stained glass will pop up here. Oops. As you can see, our shulker box is heading through. It's resetting the system. So we're going to get our, our items back again. And we get our red stained glass up here. Awesome stuff. So the menu system works lovely. Um, as you can see, we've got our basic menu back in here again that we can select from. And we could technically have nested menus because the way this works is we've got the same system as before. Um, the items are dispensed out here. Um, and head over all these hoppers. So the first four are the major menus. And whenever these activate, we activate this circuit over here, which looks rather complicated. But really all it does is it starts off um, just by powering this dropper. So it sends out the menu you've, you've selected and then it sends a pulse over here to create a delay circuit so on the next time the system is activated the one you selected will be um, powered which will unlock the hopper so that way you always return the shulker box you selected in in the last round to um, to the right place so what we actually have is when we select it we load the items from the menu back into a shulker box which is the shulker box from the menu that you just receive and you send this up and put it back into the storage of the correct slot and then you get the next shulker box and this shulker box comes up here and it's unloaded into here um, so basically each shulker box is a menu then the rest of the items are just the regular items that you can order so the white stained glass um, the red stained glass the pink stained glass the green concrete and these just power a dropper with that item in and then a signal goes back along here, all of these powering the main menu. And so that is basically how this system works. Um, you can have as many shulker boxes nested within each other as possible. You can have menus that loop. You could technically create like a, a dungeon explorer mini game where you make decisions in this panel and depending on your decision, a different thing will happen. You could have a little display or whatever that a little character moves around on with health and stats and you make decisions in this panel, you get some text telling you what to do. Um, this could technically all be done in survival. I mean, 
for a mini game it would be massive because for every different option that you could make in the game you'd have to have a different item sorter and you'd have to have a massive feedback loop here but that might be something i'll work on in the future like an rpg type mini game where you explore the world and you try to maybe escape um uh, a maze or something um but we're not going to be doing that today we're going to be no <laughs> No! <laughs> oh, is this why you don't put redstone in your your your? Sorry, this is why you don't put water in your redstone contraptions. Luckily, I don't think this should be too challenging to repair because I think I've already done it. Well, we'll see. So anyway, the selection panel is out of the way. I really like the way it looks with the shulker box displayed at the top there. And of course that's broken because I activated all that water. Um, I should be able to repair this with ease. And from just the interface it shouldn't be able to be broken. I've done quite some extensive testing. Um, and it seems to be fine. So we're, we're done with that. But there's a lot more for the shop system. So the main things I want to add in this system. Is when you request a item. You then get a shulker box dispensed. Um, with your items in and it's sent off towards the player and you also get like a little note with the price on and Then the price um, will be processed by a machine that will tell you how many diamonds you have to pay or how much of the currency You need to pay then you pay that currency and then it lets you access your items and you can click in and access your items I also need to implement a cancel order function at some point that cancels your order um, Just in case you decide you don't want to buy the stuff um, and that's about it. Another thing that I want to implement that's going to make this system great and fairly different from others is its own currency system. So I want to have a system where you have a little bank or a little vault um, and you go into a panel and you have an amount of currency in that panel. I'll have to come up with some way to display that. Um, and you um, basically trade in diamonds for that currency and the more diamonds you pay the more currency you get. And that currency can't be redeemed for diamonds, but it is worth items in the shop. So that way you're rewarding players for purchasing more, which means more diamonds for me. Um, uh, at least in the short term. And we also, um, we want to have this currency system. I'm tempted to make it fluctuate, but I don't think I'm going to do that. I think I'm just going to make it so that you can buy a set amount for a set amount of diamonds. And then that currency will use to pay for your items and it will be deducted from your personal vault. And... I don't think I'm going to add a like code system to get into the vault. I thought about this. We could do a similar thing using this selection panel over here. Where you select the item that you want. So you maybe your code is orange, orange, what blue. So you go orange and then you wait for this. And then you select orange again. And then you select blue. Maybe it could be something like that. And then that opens your vault. But I'd have to implement this with many different combinations. So that would be a major project. So I'd probably do that in a separate separate video or separate series even and then for that what we can do is implement this at a future date in the system so that's basically all the plans i have for this if you have got any more ideas of what you want me to implement make sure to leave them down in the comments um and this is going to wrap up the first episode i think over here is what i've been working on for the second episode and it is a monster as you can see this is the shulker box uh, system. It's tileable, of course, so that it fits over with that. So we don't have to have a separate system. Um, and we have our shulker boxes in here. Um, and then the shulker boxes are dispensed out, filled, and then you can request them. And there's a bunch of stuff detecting if the shulker boxes are empty, when we need to refill them, if we've got any items to refill them with, and stuff like that. As well as uh, a hopper clock to determine how many of each item we want to put in. So, for example, we don't have eight. We can have 64, or we can have uh, four stacks. Wait, this is two stacks, yeah. So we can basically have as many items as we want in there. And it's easily adjustable, but just by adjusting the amount of items in these hopper clocks over here. But that's going to be a future episode, and my plan is to can track this a lot, because as you can see, it is pretty huge. This is three modules uh, next to each other. As you can see, these two are the same, so we're going to alternate between these and these. Although the modules themselves are actually fairly similar. They're practically the same on this half. And then over here, just a few differences down at the bottom. As well as with the heights of the clocks and stuff. 
But that's going to be for a future episode. And hopefully by next episode I will have compacted this down and stuff. So thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed remember to leave a like, comment and subscribe down below. My name's been Vortex Warp, and this brand new video has come to an end. Goodbye.